but I guess the question that we're all asking is, is this the end of travel? Is this the end of travel as we know it? And I've been thinking really hard on that subject. Also, please tell me your name, where you are in the world, and what the situation is. And if you have any uh, coping strategies that have been working for you, what you're working on, how you're staying positive, please let me know in the comments as well. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen of the internet world? We are in this together. Bizarre times. Definitely pretty sure very few people saw this coming, apart from the epidemiologists who definitely saw it coming and uh, warned the world many times about the potential for a outbreak like this, a pandemic. We were blissfully unaware up until very recently um, about the severity and the magnitude of this whole thing. And as it's unrolling, as this pandemic gathers speed and infections increase um, and restrictions increase on us kind of proportionately, it's, it's a scary time. It's a scary time uh, for everyone, not just those of us who are quote unquote healthy and at minimal risk, um, but you know, our loved ones, parents, grandparents, uh, people with autoimmune deficiencies. This virus, COVID-19, has really taken the world by storm and has gone viral in the original sense of the word. A lot of us have had to make big uh, individual sacrifices during this. Um, if you didn't know, you can go and watch a video that Carrie and I made on her channel, but we had to cancel our wedding, which was scheduled for May 16th. You know, that was not an easy decision to make, but it was the right decision to make. I'm feeling very blessed to be here in my home in California uh, with my fiance and my dog and my guitar and uh, my garden. But I'm feeling right now for everybody on this planet and the people who are really struggling. These are tough times for sure and I don't think we've really been through anything quite like this in living memory. The last major global pandemic uh, of any sort of comparable magnitude was in 1918 with the so-called uh, Spanish influenza even though that probably started in Kansas um, and then you know had the perfect breeding ground and spreading mechanism with the end of the First World War and all of those troops dispersing and going back home. As a student of history, I think it's really important that we look backwards and we look at that event, at the 1918 influenza epidemic, and we learn from that because we are really at a crossroads right now where we're doing the social distancing. Everybody, uh, at least that I know, and having spoken to many of you on Instagram live streams and stuff, we're seeing that most people around the world are taking the social distancing and the self-isolation very seriously. And if you're doing that, I want to just applaud you. Thank you for doing your part. It's difficult times right now because as individuals, we really don't have a lot of power uh, in this whole in this whole thing, in this pandemic. As individuals, you know, the only thing we can really do is decide to self-isolate and to socially distance. I've, I've done my best to stay on top of the news without being overwhelmed by it. I think that that's something that we're all probably struggling with. You know, what's the balance with um, staying informed and being overloaded? And, and that's a really delicate, fine line to walk. Personally, I think that, you know, checking it once a day is, you know, an acceptable number, but anything more than that, it has the potential to spiral. And in the beginning of the pandemic, a couple of weeks ago, I was like obsessed with the news. To the point where it got bad, um, where I was just overwhelmed by the amount of information, especially as cases started popping up all over the world and the travel restrictions started to happen. You know, I was in an interesting situation on March 10th when Carrie and I were booked to fly to New Zealand for three weeks and we were really looking forward to going down there and spending time down there. My dad is originally from New Zealand. I still have family down there. 
and I studied abroad in New Zealand when I was in university a long time ago. And so I've always had a soft spot for New Zealand in my heart. But it has been a challenge and we had to make a, a tough decision and in retrospect the right decision to, uh, to cancel that trip. And luckily Air New Zealand, you know, was giving the opportunity to kind of postpone. So right now we don't have to, we're not getting charged anything to um, rebook up until mid-September. So, you know, hopefully by then um, the world will have gotten through the worst of this and we will start, you know, returning to some semblance of normality. But I guess the question that we're all asking is, is this the end of travel? Is this the end of travel as we know it? And I've been thinking really hard on that subject. And to be honest, I don't really have a great answer. I don't think anybody has a real answer about that now. Will the world be changed from this event? Most certainly. Will we as individuals rethink our choices when it comes to how and where and we spend time with others, how we gather, I definitely think so. You know, is the age of the festival behind us? Potentially for a little while. I think that people will be quite put off by large group gatherings for quite some time after this. The same goes with, you know, long international flights. Um, I think that this is really going to rewrite the narrative along, you know, how we interact with others and how we go about our day and, and, and how we choose to travel. I think personally this is definitely not going to like stop me from traveling in the future once, once the situation has been addressed properly and we've given time for all of these things to play out. Um, I'm 100% going to continue to travel. I think that we can take away some lessons though from this and, and hopefully, hopefully humanity is able to learn, you know, and this can be a moment of introspection and reflection, both on a individual scale and on a global one. How is this going to change travel? Um, big group trips. Maybe those really, you know, lose popularity. And there's no real love loss there for me. Personally, I've always been a big believer in solo travel or traveling in small groups, avoiding big group trips and prepackaged tours. Personally, I've always kind of been a, a bigger fan of traveling uh, either solo or with a small close-knit group. I think that when you do travel like that, it opens you up to um, more experiences, more cultural immersion, and just opportunities that would not present themselves if you were just another person on a bus full of people. This is the lowest level of travel since 9-11. Reading articles about cruise ships being denied ports, being denied the opportunity to uh, offload their passengers because of outbreaks of coronavirus on board. I mean, that is quite literally a script of a horror movie. And I guarantee you, screenwriters will be writing movies just like that very, very soon. This whole thing is uh, like straight out of a movie. But it's not, it's real, it's happening now. And, you know, the best thing we can do is stay put, shelter in place, hunker down, minimize your interactions with other people. Um, and you know take precautions when you do go out into public if you have to if you have to go grocery shopping you know and you have access to some gloves or a mask uh you know use it when you go into grocery shop if you don't um you know wash your hands wipe down your you know your cart if you have the opportunity to order your groceries do that shout out to all the people who are working shopping for like instacart and amazon who are going out to the grocery store multiple times a day and potentially exposing themselves to this virus so that the rest of us can stay home these people are doing really important work and they need recognition not to mention the people who are in 
the hospitals, the doctors and nurses, and all of the employees who are in the healthcare world, who are on the front lines of this thing globally, and they're going into work undersupplied, uh, underprepared, and it's just unraveling, you know? But I think that there is, there's hope here. I, I really truly believe that we may see some dark days coming up, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna be like this forever. And I think that there was a lot of hysteria, a lot of panic, you know, partly fueled by the uh, lack of transparency on behalf of the government and just the lack of concern uh, in the beginning of this. And still, in the United States right now, there is a very ad hoc patchwork of different state-by-state -state regulations with different mandates, some of which saying stay at home, others of which are still allowing people to move around. But I think that a lot of us out there are looking for answers. Many of us are probably feeling a lot of anxiety. I think that there's gonna be a lot more tough decisions in the near future for everyone out there. And I just hope that uh, we can all just stay positive and keep uh, putting one foot in front of the other and taking it one day at a time. Yes, we are not able to travel right now. I'm not able to travel and as a person who has spent the better part of the last decade um, traveling pretty much non-stop, this is a difficult time but it's also one that I am really striving to make the most of. I want to use this time to really work on myself, to work on my passions, you know, music, art, painting, gardening, uh, my health, you know, really trying to use this time to improve. And I think that that's where we need to be putting our energy. Instead of taking our energy and fretting it away with worry and anxiety and fear, we need to be taking the energy and we need to be harnessing it and putting it towards positive outlets. Whether that's working on a creative project that you've put on pause because of life, whether that's learning a new language, whether that's um, picking up an instrument and learning some songs. I think that there really is room here for positive growth and we as individuals, even though we don't have a ton uh, of stuff that we can do to make the situation better, we can stay home, we can focus on personal growth, and we can do the best we can to stay healthy. That's pretty much it. I know there's been a ton of noise lately online. I know that everybody and their mom is making a video about what's going on, and I was reluctant to, you know, add to the chatter. I really wanted to, you know, consolidate my thoughts on this and uh, present them in a concise and digestible manner. And I hope, I hope that this video uh, does that. I hope this video helps you feel a little bit of inspiration and positivity because that's what I'm trying to give to you right now. I know that these are dark days but the sun will rise again and here in California it's spring. Carrie and I just put in a couple new garden beds, lots of new plants, squash, zucchini and broccoli and kale and spinach and peppers and tomatoes. This is an opportunity for all of us to look at the way that we're living and try to make positive changes. And we don't get a lot of opportunities like this. So obviously my heart and my prayers go out to all the people who have been more drastically affected by this. Anybody who's lo lost a loved one or has has a loved one or a friend who's been hospitalized or has passed away from COVID-19. My thoughts and condolences go out to you and your family. There are some sad stories coming in from around the world, but we need to focus on the positive. We need to stay the course. We need to self-isolate. We need to keep moving forward one day at a time. So with that, I'm gonna leave you. I just wanted to send this message of love and support to all of you out there. Yeah, if you have any any videos that you would like me to make, please go ahead and share them down there in the comment section. Also, please tell me your name, where you are in the world, and what the situation is. And if you have any uh, coping strategies that have been working for you, what you're working on, how you're staying positive, please let me know in the comments as well. All right, everybody. I'm gonna keep playing the guitar, and uh, 
I'll see you all very soon in another video. Peace.